Okay, uh, good morning again and uh, welcome to the skin histology or histology of the integumentary system. Okay, so these are our intended learning objectives for today to discuss the functions of the skin, to distinguish the sublayers of the epidermis, to distinguish the sublayers of the dermis, and to, dis to, distinguish, to discuss the appendages of the skin. So, uh, as we all know, no, skin class is the largest organ in the body. It comprises the 15 to 20 percent of the total weight of our body. Its uh, function is for integument and for cutaneous covering. And this is the skin. If you see this, if, if you see the monitor from this tip of the pointer up to this area is the epidermis, and we have five layers of the skin, which will be um, discussed later. The dermis has two layers, the, retic the popular layer just beneath the epidermis and the reticular layer. The reticular layer of the dermis is also known as your dermis proper or the reticular dermis. And as we all know, the subcutaneous layer is not a layer of the skin. Alright, so it's, a, it's the subcutaneous or this is where your adipose tissue is found. All right, this is a picture again of the epidermis. If you see the dark staining structure at the top of this picture, this is the epidermis. PD stands for the papillary dermis, and RD is obviously it's the reticular dermis. So let's have a review. Please admit to yourselves. Papillary layer of the dermis is what a uh, fundamental type of tissue? Huh? Connecting. Connective. Very good. What is the uh, subtype? Um, subtype is? Connective proper. Connective tissue proper. And the specific subtype is? Your loose connective tissue. Okay. Your reticular dermis, on the other hand, is it's, what is its fundamental type of tissue? Connective tissue. What's the subtype? Dense Connective tissue proper. And what is the tissue proper? Dense irregular. Dense irregular. Irregular connective tissue. What about here? This is the subcutaneous tissue. What is the fundamental type of tissue? Connective. But then what is the subtype? Adipose. Very good. What is the parenchyma of this tissue pointed right now? Adipose cells or fat cells. Okay. Now, uh, in, uh, the, the integumentary system or the skin functions as the following for protection, sensory, thermoregulatory, metabolic, and sexual signaling. Now, let's discuss this one by one. Protection meaning it's a, a protection, it's a physical barrier against the thermal and mechanical insults. No, for example, you have your friction against most potential pathogens. This is the first sign of defense against uh, potential bacterial, viral, or any pathogens or microorganisms. These microorganisms will penetrate the skin, and the, what what um, what uh, is the role of your skin? It alert the resident lymphocytes and antigen-presenting cells in the skin and the immune response is mounted already. So I, uh, uh, also serves as protection is the melanin in the epidermis. It protects you or protects us. Uh, it protects our cell nuclei from the UV radiation. The melanin is produced also in the skin. Permeability barrier against excessive loss or uptake of water. So it's not just for purely infection purposes or protection from UV light, but it also prevents us from dehydration. Okay? Uh, selective permeability. This one allows some lipophilic drugs to be administered via skin patches. Now, what do you mean by lipo lipophilic drugs? Um, lipophilic drugs, eh, gusto, eh, fat. Okay? Gusto ng lipo, gusto ng fatty. And this fatty drugs, uh, example of which are your steroid hormones and other medications. Okay? When you say lipophilic, they are fat-loving or lipid-loving. Uh, okay, uh, skin as a sensory organ is the largest 
sensory organ. It has a constant monitoring of the environment. Now, when we uh, sensory receptors, now this will be responsible for touch, pressure, pain, and temperature. This will one sensory receptor which will be discussed in the laboratory is the Meissner's corpuscles. This is responsible for uh, light touch. Or ibasing yung pressure. Um, pressure is the Pacinian corpuscles, while the light touch is the Meissner's corpuscle. Now, skin is a sensory organ. It helps regulate the body's interaction with the physical objects. Okay. Alright, how about thermoregulatory function? Since they are, uh, it has an insulating component, it has hairs and adipose tissue, it is a major organ for thermoregulation. It accelerates heat loss and uh, through sweat production, and it has a dense superficial microvasculature, meaning it has a blood supply. So it, it, when it comes uh, to changes of temperature, skin has thermoregulatory function. What about metabolic function? Skin or the cells of the skin synthesize vitamin D3. And this is important for the calcium metabolism, for reabsorption, and proper bone formation. Uh, local action of ultraviolet light on vitamin precursor, that's the D3. So we need uh, vitamin, we, we need ultraviolet light to uh, synthesize the vitamin D. So we need, you know, enough uh, sun exposure every day. Uh, metabolic function also, the sweat. You know, removes excess electrolytes and the subcutaneous tissue, as you all know, is the adipose tissue, stores energy as fat. No, but naging metabolic function siya. Because um, in subcutaneous tissue, uh, since it is a fat storage, uh, in, term, in times of crisis, or in, for example, there is a hypoglycemia, our body will utilize the subcutaneous tissue to produce glucose. No? So, in, in store mo siya as fat, i, i, pwede mo siyang i-lipolysis or i-degrade or I break down into um, fat then or sometimes glucose to serve as fuel or energy. Okay, and last function of this integumentary system is, the, uh, is sexual signaling. Now, these are visual indicators of health involved in attraction between sexes. So these are your pigmentation, the hair. Now these sex pheromones will be secreted by the glands called apocrine glands. Um, actually, yung pheromones, if you if you are familiar with the pheromones, alam niyo naman yung dogs, di ba? Pag pinaliguan natin, eh, medyo may amoy pa din. Now these are very characteristic to the dogs. So we call that a pheromones. But for the sexual signaling, uh, it is actually an indicator for attraction between sexes. And we use pigmentation in hairs. Okay. Alright, so as discussed from the previous weeks, uh, we have two main layers of the skin. You have the epidermis and the dermis. So this is a picture showing you the stratum corneum. That's the outermost layer. That's the first uh, layer of the epidermis. Next is the stratum lucidum. Stratum lucidum class, yung pink na yan. No? This is actually, uh, this is only present in thick skin. Okay? Please take note of that. Stratum lucidum is only um, present in thick skin. The middle layer is the stratum granulosum. This will be discussed further. Ini introduce ko lang ko anong pangalan. Stratum spinosum is the uh, thickest layer of the epidermis, and the stratum basale is the one that is adherent to the um, the one that is adherent to the uh, dermis. Okay, there is a there is a stratum stratum germinativum. Stratum germinativum is a a term or a term. Uh, if you, if the stratum spinosum is joined with stratum basale, yeah, stratum spinosum plus stratum basale equals 
stratum germinativo. Okay? Ulit. Stratum corneum is the outermost. Stratum lucidum is the only layer that is found in the thick skin. Stratum granulosum is the middle. Stratum spinosum is the thickest. Stratum basale is adherent to the dermis. When you combine stratum spinosum and stratum basale, they are called stratum germinativo. Okay. Now, look at the right side of the skin. This is your dead keratinocytes. Actually, the stratum corneum is the one that is continuously shed. Ayan po yung libag. So, that would be the dead keratinocytes. Now, from this area na magkakaroon ng keratinocytes, aakyat yan, and then aakyat, and then these are the living keratinocyte. If ever, um, nagkaroon na namang sloughing off, dead keratinocytes na yan. Okay? This will be talk about in detail a little while. Okay, the lining epithelium of the epidermis of the skin is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Keratina, keratinocytes, these are your parenchyma or characteristic cells of the epidermis of the skin. No class, we have much less abundant cell types. And these are your melanocytes, Langerhans cells, and Merkel cells, which we'll be talking about later. That those are the cells of the skin. The epidermis forms the major distinction between a thick and your thin skin. And one differentiating um, feature of th thick and thin skin is the presence of the stratum lucidum layer. Nah? Alright, so let's go now to the uh, innermost muna, palabas. So the stratum basale is a single layer of a basophilic cuboidal or columnar cells on resting on a basement membrane. Attachment are usually the hemidesmosomes and the desmosomes and these take note that the stratum basale has an intense mitotic activity. Okay? Progenitor cells, uh, it, it has an intense um, mitotic activity. So, ibig sabihin yung mga cells na nasa stratum basale, it has mitotic figures. Okay. The epidermis, take note, class, that it is renewed every 15 to 30 days, depending on the age, on the region of the body, and other factors. Now, also seen at the stratum basale is the cytoskeletal keratin filaments. <clears throat> so, all you need to remember in the stratum basale is that it is a single layer of basophilic cuboidal cells on a basement membrane. Attachments are the following. It has an intense mitotic activity and the stratum basale specifically, um, yeah, it has a cytoskeletal keratin filaments. Okay, so class... If this area right here is the epidermis, this is the corneum, this is the granulosum, S would be the spinosum, itong layer na to, single layer of cuboidal cells, that is your stratum basale. Basta naka-adhere sa basement membrane at malapit sa popular layer of the dermis or the dermis, that's your stratum basale. Okay? Alright, so let's go now to... The stratum spinosum. The stratum spinosum is the thickest layer of the epidermis. Uh, it has, uh, it is characterized by a polyhedral cells with central nuclei. And in the stratum spinosum, you will see that there is a synthesis of keratin and proteins. Some cells may still divide, and this is the term. Stratum basale plus stratum spinosum is stratum germinativo. But all I want you to remember in the stratum spinosum is the presence of tonofibrils. Okay? The tonofibrils are keratin filaments that converge at desmosomes holding cells together. Uh, hindi lang siya talaga parang uh, uh, thickest layer. What makes it thick and uh, hold together is the tonofibrils. They are keratin filaments. Now, the epidermis of the thick skin has a thicker stratum spinosum. Okay? Okay, So, look at this class. This is the stratum spinosum. Some of the cells here are, they have mitotic figures because they are, they are still dividing. Hello?
they are still dividing. Uh, please turn off. Delima, please mute yourself. Okay, so this is the stratum spinoso. Noon kung makikita nyo, from this tip of the of the pointer up to this area, this is the stratum spinosum. It is it has the thickest layer in the thick skin. And please take note, this contains serotonin fibrils. Okay, now these are your keratin filaments. All right, so this is the middle layer class. This is a three to five layer of flattened cells. We call this the stratum granuloso. They undergo terminal differentiation of keratinization. And please take note if your stratum spinosum has tonofibril filaments or keratin filaments in the cytoplasm of the uh, in the stratum granulosum, it contains or the cytoplasm filled intensely basophilic masses. We call this keratohyaline granules. Not just keratohyaline granules, we also have in the stratum granulosum lamellar. Granules. They contain various lipids which produce um, lipid-rich impermeable layer around the cell. So in this layer, um, it undergoes differentiation of keratinization. Because of this, there you have a present presence of keratohyaline granules and lamellar granules in this stratum granuloso. Okay? Okay, guys, this is the... Uh, Another picture, this is the lucidum. This is the R3 to 5 layers of stratum granulosum. Mamaya, may papakita tayong pictures. If this is the granulosum, this is your stratum spinosum. Yeah, this is another, this is a better picture showing you the 5 layers. Ah, uh, sorry, this is just a thin skin. Bakit thin skin to? Kasi wala siyang stratum lucidum. Okay? So this is the basale. This is the spinosum. Look at the dark staining. Uh, one layer lang to eh, kapag thin skin. Kasi thin nga. So nag-isa. Pero meron pa rin siyang stratum granulosum. Okay? Ano nga meron sa stratum granulosum? Kerato, hyaline granules, and lamellar granules. Alright. So this is found only in the thick skin. And this is your stratum lucidum. This is a thin, translucent layer of a flattened eosinophilic keratinocytes. And these keratinocytes are held together by your desmosomes. Actually, class, in this layer, organelles no, and the nuclei are absent already. So, hindi na sila masyado nag, um, nagde-divide. Kasi wala na silang organelles and nuclei. The cytoplasm at the stratum lucidum contain packed keratin filaments in an electron dense matrix so meron din palang keratin filaments pero um, if you uh, if you're listening tonofibrils are keratin filaments which are only found at the stratum spinosum okay so all you need to remember the stratum lucidum is that they're only found in thick skin these car the keratinocytes found in this layer are held together by desmosomes and the nuclei and organelles of these keratinocytes are absent already okay so, class, nakita nyo ba yung pink structure na yan? That is your stratum lucidum. So, from this tip of the pointer up to this area is your stratum corneum. Uh, just beneath that is this one. That is the stratum lucidum. Stratum granulosum is these 3 to 5 layers of dark staining cells. And the stratum spinosum is the thickest among the 5 layers of the epidermis. Okay, and lastly, is our stratum corneum. It is composed of 15 to 20 layers of squamous keratinized cells. They are um, described to be birefringent filamentous keratins, and this is where the keratinization ends. No? The squames are fully keratinized, or what we call cornified. And please take note that the stratum corneum continuously shed at epidermal surface so you this is from the tip of the pointer up to this area is the stratum corneum this layer is continuously shedding okay all right so what are the differences between thin and thick skin look at the stratum corneum 
in the thin skin, uh, alam natin na pwed kasing kapal yan, katulad ng thick, pero, no, makita nyo maraming space sa thin skin compared to your thick skin. And uh, another is the stratum lucidum. Where can we find stratum lucidum? Only at the thick skin. There. Okay? There's no stratum lucidum in thin skin. Stratum spinosum is still present and stratum basale, they're both present in thin and thick skin. Okay? Alright, this is just a differentiation, a table showing you the thick and thin skin. So where are they located? Uh, look at your palms and soles. So these are your thick skin. The number of layers of the epidermis is 5, including the stratum lucidum. And the thin skin contains only four without stratum lucidum. Look, class, if uh, look at your palms and soles, na yun nakita ba kayo yung um, hair follicle or uh, buhok? Wala, di ba? Because hair follicle, the erector pili muscle, and the sebaceous glands, lahat ng tong naka-X na to sa so thick skin, this is your pilosebaceous unit. Again, this is the pilo, pilo, P I L O, sebaceous unit. It is composed of your hair, hair follicle, erector pili muscle, and sebaceous glands. So, ito ay wala sa thick skin. Pero, meron siya sa thin skin. Okay? What else? Pares ba sila may sweat glands? Yes. Pares nagpapawis ang thick and thin skin. Alright, so we're done with the functions of the skin and the different layers of the skin. All you need to remember is the different layers, sub-layers of the epidermis, what are its distinct characteristics, and uh, the comparison between thick and thin skin. Okay, let's go now to the cells of the epidermis. These are your keratinocytes, and as you all know, keratinocytes is the parenchyma. Melanocytes, Lagerhand cells, and Merkel cells. Yeah. So, principal cells are parenchyma. The main function of our keratinocyte is to synthesize keratin. Keratin is a family of six polypeptides with molecular masses ranging from 40 to 70 kDa. So, uh, in keratinocytes, pag tinanong ko sa practical exam at nakaturo dun sa epidermis at may muscles, identify parenchyma, you'll answer keratinocyte. What is the function of the cell pointed? Synthesize keratin. Okay, is that clear? Okay, uh, this is that these are all keratinocytes. What again is the uh, parenchyma of the epidermis of the skin? Keratinocyte. What is the number of nucleus? It's mononucleated. Location of the nucleus is centrally located. The arrangement of the keratinocyte is what? It is arranged in layers or sheets. Okay, next cell of the epidermis is the melanocyte. Now look, they are found in the basalis epidermis. Okay? Basal epidermis or stratum basale. They synthesize not keratin but they synthesize pigment melanin in melanosomes. Yan, pakibilugan ng melanin, pigment. It transport uh, from melanocyte na nasa basale, they transport to keratinocyte and the, melan the melanocytes, its function is to protect nuclear DNA from ultraviolet damage. Now, for every melanocyte, it is composed of a 5 to 6 basal keratinocytes. Um, with all this description, uh, I want all you to remember that these melanocytes are pale. It has a pale staining cytoplasm. Ano ba tayo? Yun. <clears throat> these are your melanocytes. Nakita niyo, class? It has a, these are all keratinocytes. All keratinocytes. And this is a melanocyte. It has a pale um, looking cytoplasm. And they're only found in the basal epidermis. No? Another uh, picture of your Yan, eh, no? Nakita nyo? These are all keratinocytes, but this is a melanocyte. It has a, uh, it is found at the stratum basale, and they are, it has a pale, look, staining cytoplasm. Here. 
Okay, those are the melanocytes. No? Makita natin yan kasi mayroong nucleus, mayroong cytoplasm, pero it has pale cytoplasm. Okay, look at this picture. If these are the melanocytes, what does it secrete? Melanin pigment na nandun sa melanocyte. Now, the melanin pigment will go to the keratinocyte. So, this is a keratinocyte melanin pigment. Okay? In, uh, this is also a vesicle with melanin. So, melanin is produced by melanocyte. All, that's all you need to remember. Okay? Alright. So, next would be the Langerhans cells. The longer hand cells are your dendritic cells. They are actually your antigen presenting cells. They are your monocyte phagocyte system that is found only in the skin. Okay? The longer hand cells, they are present in all layers of the epidermis, but the most um, uh, most of the longer hand cells are found, of course, at the thickest layer of the epidermis, which is your stratum spinosum. Okay? Again, class, if I ask you, where can you find Langerhans cell? Almost all layers of epidermis. But if I ask you, most of the Langerhans cells are found in this sub-layer of epidermis, you'll answer stratum spinosum. Okay? Alright, so its function is to antigen, is antigen presenting cells. They intercepts microbial invaders in adaptive immune response. So they are the dendritic cells or antigen presenting cells. Yeah, yeah, no, longer hand cells. So if this is the stratum spinosum, no, this those are your longer hand cells. Okay, last cell is the Merkel cells. They are epithelial tactile cells with they are low threshold mechanoreceptor. So they sense gentle touch. They're abundant in fingertips and bases of the hair follicle. Now, we, we have this Merkel cell carcinoma, which is very uncommon, and it has twice the mortality of a malignant melanoma. So if you have Merkel cell carcinoma, no, uh, mas mataas yung chances na uh, mas malignant to compared to a melanoma. Or its main function is for Tactile or gentle touch, and they are low threshold mechanoreceptors. No? Where are these Merkel cells? Here, again. No, pero hindi ito makikita sa lab orientation natin. Okay? But, but, but uh, please take note in our lecture uh, exam. Alright, so any questions in epidermis? Okay. All you need to remember are the sub-layers of the epidermis and the cells of the epidermis. Now, let's go now to the dermis. This is the second layer of the, epi of the skin. Uh, what does it do? It supports the epidermis. It binds to the hypodermis and the thickest dermis are found in the upper back. Ay, ay na may pinakamakapal na dermis. Now, Question, meron ba doc blood vessels sa uh, epidermis? None. Okay? Eh, saan galing yung mga blood supply or nutrients ng epidermis? Sa dermis. Okay? Kaya nga sabi is, it supports the epidermis. Okay, again, uh, the nutrients will be diffused into the avascular epidermis, meaning wala namang blood supply ang epidermis, kaya the nutrients will be coming from the dermis. Because the dermis has vasculature. Okay? Ibig sabihin, they have plenty of blood supply. Okay, in this picture, from this tip of, this is the epidermis. And from this tip of the pointer up to this area is the dermis or papillary dermis. It's a loose connective tissue, right? Now, from this area up to this area, oops, sorry, is the reticular layer of the dermis. Now, can you see this class? These are all blood vessels. That's why uh, the, the nourishment of the dermis would be coming from this blood supply and the nourishment of the epidermis would be coming from the dermis proper. Okay, let's talk about papillary dermis. Um, it is a loose connective tissue. Sorry, it's, uh, it's uh, subtype is connective tissue proper. And, it's the, and the specific subtype is a loose connective tissue. 
it contains type 1 and type 3 collagen. And the cells found at the papillary dermis are your fibroblast, your mast cells, your macrophages, and your leukocytes. They are all they have also anchoring fibrils of type 7 collagen that is inserted in the basal lamina. So all you need to remember here is that the papillary dermis uh, is a type 1 and type 3 collagen. It's a loose connective tissue, and the cells present are the following. Okay. This the papillary dermis is just beneath the epidermis. Alright, so Reticular dermis, on the other hand, is also known as your dermis proper. Okay, uh, the subtype of tissue is the connective tissue proper. A specific subtype is the one that is pointed, the, the one that is uh, projected in the skin. It's dense, irregular connective tissue. But take note, the reticular dermis only or mainly bundles of type one collagen fibers. Okay, they have more fibers, fewer on cells. They also have elastic fibers, but mainly bundles of type 1 collagen fibers. Okay, that is the reticular dermis. So this is your, um, uh, what's this? The dermis. So this is the epidermis. This is the popular layer of the dermis. Wala masyad, more of the ground substance, right? So kaya siya loose. From this area, right here, until this area, those are your dermis proper or your reticular dermis. Um, yung, makita nyo yung pink structure na yan, These are your collagen. Ito mga black structure na yan, Those are, it could be a, an elastic fibers. And the white are your ground substance. So, konti yung ground substance are reticular dermis compared to your papillary dermis. Yeah. So, an important constituent of both zones is the elastin. Okay? Uh, this is black against red stained collagen. It has a long and thick in reticular and follow the course of the collagen fibers. Very fine and scanty and scarcely stained in the papillary dermis. Kaya mostly nakita siya sa dermis. That is your elastin or found in the elastic fibers. Okay? So those are no, in black structure na yan, those are your elastic fibers. And the pinkish structure are your collagen fibers. What about the white ones? Those are the ground substance. Okay. <clears throat> As I mentioned a while ago, dermis is rich in blood vessels and lymphatic vessels actually. Uh, these are the plexuses, the subpopular plexus, the deep plexus, and the AV or the arterial venous anastomosis, these are the blood supply of your dermis. They also has a rich inner vision such as hair follicles, or effector, effector nerves, the sweat glands, and this um, uh, sweat glands or, and hair follicles, they are very important for thermoregulation, which will be discussed later as appendages. Okay. Question, is a subcutaneous tissue a, tish, a layer of the skin? Your answer is no. no. We all know that this a adipose tissue that is beneath the dermis. We call uh, the subcutaneous tissue also as your hypodermis or your superficial fascia. Now, it binds the skin loosely to, sub to, to adjacent organs and there are mainly adipose tissue. Again, what is the parenchyma of the adipose tissue? adipocyte or fat cells or adipose cells and the characteristic appearance of the fat cells is um, signet ring in appearance okay okay this is yeah at least meron na dito these are all um hypodermis or subcutaneous tissue or adipose tissue now this one is are the dense irregular connective tissue this is kapag dense irregular nasa uh, dermis ka pa or reticular dermis so may nag inject na ng konting mga fats now what is this air what is this uh, class um, this one is your pasinian corpus cells it looks like it's chopped onion in histology so kapag nakita ng ganyan it is a, it is a pasinian corpus cell and most common question to ask is what is the function this is for pressure okay 
this is for pressure or uh, vibration. Pero more, mostly pressure, the pasinian corpuscles. Okay? Alright, also found in our skin are sensory receptors. And we have an unencapsulated and encapsulated. So please um, take note of the unencapsulated or if it is capsulated. Um, under unencapsulated are your Merkel cells, your free nerve endings, and your root hair plexuses. While your encapsulated receptors, example of which are your Meissner corpuscles, your Meissner corpuscles respond to light touch or low frequency stimuli that are present uh, in the fingertips, palms, and soles, and they decline as one ages suddenly. Not the Meissner corpuscles. Where are these Meissner corpuscles found? They are found at the papi dermal papilla or the um, papillary layer of the dermis. Jan sila nakalocate ang Meissner's corpuscles. Usually, ang um, questions to ask yan, yeah, this is a Meissner's corpuscles. No? If this is the stratum basal, usually, nandyan na sa papillary layer of the dermis. Okay? Now, now, can you appreciate class? This is your Meissner's corpuscle. Nucleated siya, tas pahaba. So, if I if I ask what is the uh, structure pointed, answer Meissner's corpuscle. What is the function of the structure pointed for light touch? Where it is located, papillary layer of the dermis or dermal papillae. Okay, so yun yung opening questions in the practical and in lecture laboratory in in uh, prelims. Okay, so we're done with epidermis. Dermis, the dermis proper and sensory receptors. Let's go now to the skin appendages. Okay, your skin appendages. Sabi natin, if my hair follicle, no, and this is the spilosebaceous unit class, so hair follicle, uh, sebaceous glands, and the erector pili muscle, those are your, the pilosebaceous unit. Kapag my hair follicle, thick or thin skin. Your answer is thin skin. Okay? Thin skin po yan. Kasi yan lang may may hair follicle. Okay, what else? So, these are your uh, sweat glands. No? Yun ang sweat glands mo. Ito, kitang kita. Kasi ang sweat glands ay, ayun, may duck palabas. So, these are the sweat gland duck. At ang mga sweat mo is lalo sa, uh, sa skin. No, through a duck. So we'll discuss this in a while. So what are the skin appendages? First is the hair. Uh, hair actually are elongated keratinized structures and they are formed within epidermal invaginations called your hair follicle. Hair follicle is uh, a part of your pilosebaceous unit. Okay? Yeah, in class. The hair bulb, that is the terminal dilation of the hair follicle, and in the dermal papillae, they contain capillaries to sustain the hair follicle. Now, what uh, in, in dermis, you have they undergo keratinization, melanin accumulation, and thermal differentiation, and that is where uh, that is why your hair fall at the dermal papillae sustain hair follicle. Okay, erector pili muscle. So, as I mentioned, um, the erector pili muscle is actually a smooth muscle which pulls hair erect. No, during goosebumps. Okay, those are your goose flesh. No, pag kinikilabutan kayo, erector pili muscle is responsible for um, pulling of the hair, which is para maging erect. Okay, and the cells proliferate to become hair. Uh, we need hair bulb matrix. Ayan. So, if this is a hair follicle class, this is the shaft actually. No, if this is the hair follicle, you will see a erector pili muscle. So this is a smooth muscle which uh, contracts or it pulls the hair erect during goosebumps. Okay, this is another picture of the uh, hair uh, in hematoxin A seen stain. So this is the dermal papilla and you have the hair bulb and the hair shaft. Okay? What else? Uh, yeah, this is a hair follicle. Kapag sa practical exam, tinanong namin kayo, identify structure pointed. This is a hair follicle. No? The muscle, 
attached to it is the erector pili muscle. Wala dito sebaceous glands. Okay? So again, pilo sebaceous unit composed of hair follicle, smooth muscle, ah, sorry, erector pili muscle, and your uh, sebaceous glands. Yeah. So, sebaceous glands, they are embedded in the dermis except in areas which lack hair. No? Hair follicle plus sebaceous glands uh, plus erector pili muscle is known as your pilosebaceous unit. They're closely at, uh, applied to hair follicles and the manner of secretion is holocrine. What do you mean by holocrine? There is total or partial de destruction or uh, loss of that gland when they release um, uh, secretion. Okay? The sebocytes, yeah, sebo, secrete sebum. They lubricate the epidermis in your hair. And if I ask you what is the uh, uh, morphology of the sebaceous glands, you will answer simple branched assigner glands. Okay? Those are the mast lobes. You need to know the, the morphology, simple branched assigner glands, manner or type of secretion, uh, sorry, type of secretion is uh, serous or sebum. What is, uh, how is the uh, excretory product secreted? Holocrine. Yan ang, yan ang tatanday. Holocrine is uh, total destruction of the glands just to release the excretory products. Okay? So, this, this is the hair follicle class. So, the one that, sur the gland that surrounds the hair follicle is obviously the sebaceous gland kasi Pilosebaceous unit yan. Okay? Uh, medyo, hindi masyadong kita yung mga smooth muscles yan, but this is the erector pili muscle and this is the sebaceous glands. Okay? Oh, another picture. This is a hair follicle, this is the sebaceous gland, and this is the uh, muscle. Not the erector pili muscle, the hair follicle. This is this comprises your pilosebaceous unit. Okay, so... If your sebaceous gland is simple branched assigner, please take note that their sweat glands are simple coiled tubular. Okay? They are important in thermoregulation. They react by secreting in stressful situations. So if you notice, they are dark, darker ang staining nito compared to your sweat glands. Ang clue nyo para malaman yung sweat glands ay, sorry, kung para malaman yung sebaceous glands, malapit sila sa hair follicle. Okay? And they are light staining. Look, ang um, sweat glands naman, they are uh, darker ang um, staining nila. And if you notice, these are the excretory duct of the sweat glands. Okay. So not just um, sweat glands, no? We, got, we have eccrine and apocrine sweat glands. So in eccrine sweat glands, these are your sweat pore, no? the secretory portions of the eccrine sweat glands, they are uh, the lining epithelium is stratified cuboidal epithelium. The excretory ducts of this eccrine sweat glands, you have two layers of smaller cuboidal cells. And in the eccrine sweat glands, you have, will find the myoepithelial cells. They are found between your secretory cells and your basement membrane in the epithelial tissue. The contraction of these myoepithelial cells will expel sweat into the excretory duct. So this is your eccrine sweat glands. Okay? Your eccrine sweat glands. What about, no, look at this uh, picture class. No, these are your sweat glands. The, these are the ducts. No? The ducts yung gitna na yung papuntang labas. So these are eccrine sweat glands. How about apocrine sweat glands? They are found in the axilla in the perineal regions. No, they have this viscid or viscous milky secretion which when acted upon by bacteria produces an objectionable odor. So they are discharged into hair follicles and the apocrine sweat glands take note they begin functional activity at puberty. Well, actually during um, childhood nagsastart na siyang magdevelop. Okay? But fully develop at the age of puberty, and in the, pag hindi kayo masya, at when, when it is uh, come in contact with uh, bacteria, 
this apocrine sweat glands, that ecrina, the apocrine sweat glands will produce body odor. Okay? Kaya common yan sa mga teenager kasi hindi pa sila masyadong conscious. Actually, dapat conscious na sila sa mga ganyang mga body changes nila during puberty. No? Yeah. So, huwag niyo, tat- huwag niyo kakalimutan to ha? They are found in the axilla and perineal regions and they produce this objectionable odor when it is acted upon by bacteria. Okay? Wala na yan. Okay, these are our apocrine sweat glands. So, uh, what does it secrete? It secretes milky secretion, viscous secretion, uh, na huwag naman sana parating may bacteria. Okay? So, this is a comparison between an eccrine gland and your apocrine uh, sweat glands. Okay? And lastly, the nails. No? The nails are hard plates of keratin. Uh, the nail plate is actually a dense keratinized plate and the nail bed is uh, uh, its lining epithelium is stratified squamous, no epithelium. The proximal part of the nail is the nail root. Now, if you look close, closely, this is the nail fold. The lunula, yung parang moon shape din. Uh, minsan may mga, may mga pra, pasyente or tao na wala masyadong lunula. No? Lunula yung white structure dyan. So, if this is the nail root, this is the nail bed, and if there is a laceration or a valse or parang naputol, no? yung area na to, obviously, kapag nagkaroon ng injury dito, wala ka ng kuko after. Okay? Kasi syempre, dito nagkakaroon ng keratinization. If may mga problems dito sa area na to, sa finger, eh syempre, magkakaroon ng problems sa nail formation. Okay. That's all. Uh, Thank you for listening.